we finally have a quick, small, fun job in the shop today instead of the big production slog that I've been stuck on. We are making a belt buckle. A really, really cool belt buckle. It'll have no moving parts. This is actually a customer job. This isn't just me. Uh, it'll be coming out of this chunk of 316 stainless and should be pretty fun. Our stock on this is three and a quarter by two and a quarter. So about there and about there. This feels like a big belt buckle. It's gonna be a little bit large. I guess it'll get smaller when we machine it. And I guess big belt buckles are kind of a thing. And believe it or not, there's no weird work holding in this video. There's nothing funky with the setup. It is just part and vice. I guess you could argue that my little self-centering vices on my Aroa system are funky, but for the most part, there's nothing funky here. As is tradition for op ones, the work coordinate system is located in the center of the Aroa system and then on the top of the part. Conveniently, all the tools on this job are standard tools, so they're already set and ready to go. We basically just need to prove out the program. And go. Wrong work coordinate system. Attempt two. That sounds awful. Why does that sound awful? Is it just because it's going around that saw cut edge? It's probably a little bit oversized. Nope, second pass still sounds awful. Here's a Scott. Scott, what'd you just say? I said it's very clean in here. He said it's very clean in here. Now it sounds better. I went a little extra on the cam with this. So I think we're just going to time-lapse mode. That's definitely not looking too bad. I did come back and I ran a second surfacing tool path on this top curve here. Originally, I just went in lines like that, uh, but I came back and ran perpendicular passes just to kind of get any cusps as small as we can. And I'm going to polish the top of this. And I have some ideas on how I'm going to do that, which we'll get to later. But I figured anything to make it smoother off the machine would make that easier later on. Let's take this thing out of the vise while the vise is still on the table. Then we can remove our vise. And put in our soft jaw vise. These jaws are the same jaws I just used on that last production job, but we'll just machine right over that other geometry. I normally get five, six, seven uses out of one pair of soft jaws, since most of the parts I make are rather small, and I just kind of progressively make bigger parts on each side. And then I can flip these over 180 degrees and use this other side here. So fun fact about these soft jaws that we're about to make, these were programmed entirely by toolpath.com. I did no manual cam on them. All I did was design them with my template. I have a video on that toolpath cam soft jaws template and I sent it to toolpath and then I pulled down the code and then I stuck it on my controller. So I did run a simulation to make sure, but this is all AI generated. So let's see how it runs. Those soft jaws came out pretty well. Good job, Mr. AI. That is all curved to match the belt buckle. And then there's a big relief here going around the outside. It's an eighth inch slot. I did make a little bit of a mistake though. I got all excited about being able to reuse those soft jaws that I forgot that I programmed it for these bigger soft jaws, not the little soft jaws. So the pocket didn't quite fit all the way on, but we have these little sections here which makes me think that this will still fit. So let's see. Oh yeah, that's fine. That's fine, it fits.
And there's our second operation with it looking pretty good. I think by volume, that's more chips than this machine's made in the last month because I keep doing tiny parts. But let's get this out of here and take a look. So there's our belt buckle. Need to do some finishing on it. Looks like I have a little bit of a burr there. I noticed a burr up here. Uh, but we are going to tumble this thing to death. So those will be dealt with. I just knocked off the burrs. But you can see there's the finished part there. Our wall finishes are looking really good. The backside, I just left the lines consistent. I didn't do the like cross hatch pattern like I did on the front. The front I did, you can actually see something interesting there with the way the light plays off like right here. You see how there's kind of like waves? I think that was actually a smoothing issue with the machine. There's different smoothing modes that you can turn on and I had it set to a uh, like a roughing mode and it tessellated on the part a little bit. I guess it could have also been in cam, but you can kind of see just, and it's a mismatch of tenths or less, but you can kind of see some of that tessellation pattern as it goes across the top. So that's something I could optimize for later. But again, we're going to tumble this thing to death and potentially do some sanding and polishing on it. So I don't think it's going to be an issue. Um, honestly, if I was making this, I would just leave that horizontal pattern and call it a feature. Uh, but the customer wants it shiny. So we'll make it shiny, by golly. With Design the Everything, I built up quite a bit of experience getting cosmetic finishes with tumbling. And let's go through some of that now. So this media here, this is like a large ceramic triangles or whatever they call it, or cones. Um, this is really good for aggressive deburring and smoothing out parts. It doesn't leave quite as much of a smooth finish as some of my other options, but it, it works really fast. Now, I've also learned that how fresh this stuff is matters a lot. So I have this stuff that's used and really smooth. And then I have some more stuff here that I've like, well, there's one of them that I've um, not used as much. And this cuts a lot faster, but doesn't leave quite as smooth of a finish. So you can notice a difference between these two. Then there's this stuff. And this is my own custom blend that I kind of worked on over time. So this is one that's very well worn. It's got a lot of these really small pieces in it. No, it's hard to show, but these little small cylinders and it's got these kind of medium cylinders then it's got some of these big white ones. And this is really good about getting into nooks and crevices and it leaves a really, really consistent like a matte gray finish. And I don't have it here, but I also have some corn cobs that have polishing compound in them and that will make it shiny. So my plan is the worn down bigger media this stuff, the stuff that's big but seen some use, followed by the little stuff to make sure it gets in all these little nooks and crevices and leaves a consistent finish. And then lastly, I will do the polishing media. Now I have another option. If I wanna throw an extra step in there, I also have these plastic triangles um, and these are really gentle. Uh, but they are pointy, so they're better at getting into like cracks and crevices. I'd normally use these if I already have a pretty smooth, consistent looking finish, and I just want to give it that stonewashed look. I use these plastic triangles because they don't eat off as much material, but they, they, they scratch the surface. That's what tumbling does, um, which is nice sometimes because if you already have a good machine finish, but you don't want the part to look scratched with use. You basically just pre-scratch it with the triangles and then you won't notice new scratches that are added to it. Welcome to my very messy sink. Um, another thing that's important about tumbling is how much, meat, how much water to media you use. The more water you use, the faster it will cut and the brighter the finish will be. So if you want a dark finish, you don't use very much water. If you want a bright finish, you use a lot of water. So in this case, I want it to cut fast and I want it to be brighter. So I'm gonna put a fair amount of water in here. And this is a rotary tumbler instead of a vibratory. 
They aren't nearly as aggressive, but they're so much quieter. And for anything that doesn't rust, I just use a little bit of this dish soap here. This was a concentrate from a restaurant that I used to work at like 10 years ago. Um, and I still have that container. The soap kind of works like the water, where if you, the more you use, the brighter finish you'll get. If you want a darker finish, you'll use less of it. Um, but you can't do too much or too little or you run into problems. Who wants to take bets on how much media we get stuck in these holes? One of the rules of tumbling is that any hole that can have media stuck in it will have media stuck in it, but we'll find out tomorrow. And there she goes. Now I know overnight seems like a long time, and if you were using a vibratory tumbler, it probably would be, but with these rotary tumblers, there's so much less energy in the system that you can let it run for longer. It's a lot less sensitive to how long you leave it in because it's a slower process. This is our part right out of the tumbler. It certainly doesn't look bad, but I can see tool marks and I don't want to see those, but I have a plan of fixing that. I knew it was going to look like this. So to that end, I printed these while this was tumbling. These are sanding blocks, lapping blocks, whatever you want to call them. They're just fit to the shape of the belt buckle so that I can do some sanding on it without distorting our final shape. I have this 220 grit sandpaper I'm going to start with, but I'm going to cut a piece to fit here. And then I can use that and just kind of rock the block back and forth and hopefully get a nice looking finish that should match the shape of the buckle. That works surprisingly well. All right. Now to test this. Oh yeah, it's working great. We don't really care about the grain direction because this isn't going to be the aesthetic finish. This will get tumbled out. Wow, that works so well. You can see in the light that I was able to keep the radius there pretty consistent. It's very smooth now and that did not take a lot of work. I did end up putting some simple green on my sandpaper to make it more of a wet sanding process. Um, and that looks so good. Time for the other side now. I'm gonna start wet this time. And hopefully this is just as easy. Oh yeah, I was afraid this side would be harder. Nope, this is great. I am really happy with how this came out so far. Uh, there is definitely no tool marks left. The sides were already pretty clean and now the top and bottom are, are spotless. So if I did this again, I would use a bigger tool to surface it in. I don't know why I used an eighth inch tool. That's way too small for the size of this. And I probably could have done this part twice as fast and the finish would have been twice as good uh, if I used a bigger tool. So doing that next time, but let's get this in the tumbler again, because now we need to get it to the point where it is polished. So I think I'm gonna put it in the plastic triangles and do maybe an hour or two in the plastic triangles, and then we will get it in the polishing compound overnight. All right, let's see how our triangles did, or green cones. Looking at it, this looks super good. The triangles did a really good job, of, or the green cones, the plastic cones, did a really good job of evening out the surface, but still leaving it, you know, stone washed. So that I am very happy with. I honestly am wondering if we even need to put it in the polishing media, because that looks so good. So I'm thinking we put it in the polishing media overnight tonight, and we'll send pictures of both this and the polish state in the morning to the customer. And we'll let the customer choose which finish they like better. If they like the polished media, good, it's, we ship it. 
if they like this better, we put it back in the plastic triangles for 20 minutes and it'll look like this again. So we're, we're so close here. It just takes a lot of tumbling to get this. I really miss making pretty things. This is the polishing media. This is corn cob and it has some sort of polish already saturated into the little kernels. Um, and I found this does a pretty good job. I'm sure there's something better. I haven't gotten too far into polishing with the tumbler, but I've been happy with these. Boop. And now we wait again. So I mentioned earlier this job was for Subtract. Subtract is actually a different business venture of mine. Audacity Micro is now a job shop that works exclusively for the Subtract network. Subtract is a network, a collective of machine shops that are working together to accomplish more than any one shop could on their own. A lot of us are fairly niche shops that are good at what we're good at and not good at what we're not good at. So I'm great at small, detailed, and complex parts. I am not good at big stuff. I've tried to do it a couple times and I just have learned to not touch any part that is, you know, relatively large. And by relatively large, I mean like four inches or bigger. But there are shops on the network that are really good at that stuff. And that is what they specialize in, but they wouldn't be able to take the small stuff that I take. So by you know, forming this collective, we are able to complement each other. And when I get work that needs big stuff done, I send it to them. When they get jobs that have little small stuff, they send it to me. On paper, like when you explain what we do, we sound a lot like a company like Zometry or Fictive or any of the other ones that have been popping up lately but there's really quite a bit of difference. For one, we're not publicly traded. We don't have investors. We have no obligation to anybody else to grow as quickly as possible. We are intentionally staying smaller and that lets us do things like this belt buckle project where one, doing one belt buckle is really honestly probably not worth our time, but we can work with this customer and develop processes and get a product that they really like so that when they go to market, they'll have a really dialed in product that we can then manufacture for them. If you have a company like Zometry, I mean, sure, they would machine your part for you, but there would be nothing beyond that. So if you have any parts, whether they're a product like this belt buckle or you know a jig or a fixture, check out subtractmanufacturing.com. We'll get you a quote. The best shop for your job will take those parts for you and we'll get them to you quickly and we guarantee that they will be high quality. All right, it is the next day. Ugh. Let's see how this did. So there's our final result. And I am pretty happy with that. You can still see a little bit of the sanding coming through but it's nice and polished. On the back, I definitely did not spend as much time taking out the tool marks. So it's a little bit rougher on the back, but the edges and the front are just fantastic. Well, I'm gonna get this packaged up and sent off to the customer. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.